welcome to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are in Matthew chapter 16, and this is such a great chapter. So many different things happen in this chapter, um, uh, specifically with Peter, and it's interesting, um, but it shows you the character of Christ, even in the midst of difficult times, I should say. And it, it shows you the character of Christ despite or in spite of who people are that are closest to him, specifically Peter. So I'm really excited to get into it today. So um, if you haven't already, um, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post a video. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you will speak to us today through your Holy Spirit. I thank you that we will, we will get a picture of who our Father is because we see how Jesus honored the Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. So it's, it's a great chapter. We, we see two parts um, in this chapter. The first part we see is um, Jesus asking, like, you know, who do, who do you guys think I am? Who do they say I am? And Peter's like, you are the son of, you know, he says, um, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus um, said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And so Pretty much Jesus is saying, Peter, you are on the right track. Now, I don't know if after this moment where Jesus gives Peter um, some credit, he says, hey, like, my Father in heaven revealed this to you. Um, and then we see, we, we see where Jesus wants to build his church, which is on the revelation of who Jesus is. Amen. Um, not only that, though, but the church is built on the Father speaking. The church is built on, on, on being led by his spirit. Amen. So, but that happens, and then a few moments later, um, um, a few moments later, or I mean, a little while goes by, but, um, but in this chapter, it says, from that time, verse 21, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. So, we, so Jesus is literally telling the disciples, hey, I'm going to suffer many things and I'm going to be killed. But on the third day, I will rise from the dead. Amen. Um, what we know is obviously Easter, right? Or Resurrection Sunday. That's when we celebrate that. So Jesus is confident in the timeline. And here's the amazing part. Jesus knows the beginning from the end. Now, we know that Jesus put away all of his heavenly privileges. But here from what we see in this verse, Jesus has an understanding. He says, I know I'm going to suffer. I know I'm going to be killed. But on the third day, my Father in heaven is going to raise me up from the dead. He, 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 he's, and listen, he's suffering those persecutions, he, and, and he will be killed for you and me. For, for everyone who will say yes to Jesus, everyone who will say, Lord, I want to live with you. I want to have relationship with you. I want to abide in you. I want to spend eternity with you forever. Gee, that, that is the will of God, is that everyone spends eternity with him. That is his heart expressed through the suffering of Jesus. But right here, we, we, we see Jesus knew. He said, um, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must, he must. He knows this is, this is how it needs to be done. He must go to Jerusalem and suffer so many things from the elders and chief priests um, and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. So Jesus knows the end. He's like, yes, this is what's going to happen, but I will be raised on the third day. But the disciples don't hear the end of it. They're caught up in the middle. And sometimes we get caught up in the middle, right? Whether it's a process of getting out of a sin, whether it's a process of um, and what I mean by getting out of a sin is, you know, if you're always complaining, you know, there's a process in not complaining anymore. Or if you, or if you have negative thoughts, there's a process. Um, or if you're addicted to something, or if you're bound by something, or if there's relational, like there's a process in, in letting go that's in an overcoming, amen? There's a process, sanctification, in which your spirit grows and throws out your flesh, <laughs> amen? Um, so, to put it in simple terms. So, um, so sometimes we can get caught up in the middle in the process and Jesus lays out, he's like, we're going to go to Jerusalem. Uh, they're going to kill me, but I'm going to be raised on the third day. Why? Cause I'm the Christ, right? We, we saw that earlier, but they're, but they don't, but they start to not want to go cause they're concerned about the middle part. 
And listen to me, church, don't be concerned with the middle process because the end is, um, the end is worth, it. It was worth it. It was worth it for Jesus. I don't know what you're going through, so I don't know who this is for, but let me tell you, whatever it is you're going through, if you're being led by the Spirit, if you're, if you're walking in the Spirit, if you're being led by wisdom, and if you're going after Jesus, whatever you're going through, listen to me. The other side, where the will of God is, I mean, I'm not saying you're not in the will of God right now, but where, where, where God is intending you need to go, that destination, that next level, that next promotion, that next relationship, that next whatever it is, um, what, whatever it is that God is doing in your life now, know that there is a goal to whatever process you're going through right now. It might hurt. It might, what Proverbs says is that in the same way, in the same way that gold and silver is purified in fire, God does that with our hearts where he purifies our hearts, um, through, with, with fire. You know, God doesn't, um, God doesn't cause negative things to happen in our life, but he does use those things to expose and show things in our life that should not be there. Anyway, so, um, so verse 22, then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But, verse 23, but he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are an offense to me. You are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of Man, so very, so off the bat, we have to read the Bible because we can see, like, Peter's like, no, like, I don't want this to happen to you. We don't want this to happen to you. And Jesus pretty much calls out Satan in this moment. What was Satan trying to do? He was trying to get in the way of the will of God. And, 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 and he was doing it in a very, very specific way. As, as a matter of fact, I believe right here that he was doing it in a way that Satan was trying to do it in a way of, see, Satan wasn't trying to use, like, pain, like, oh, like, it's going to hurt a lot and it's going to suck. You know, to, to, to be beaten and bruised and, 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 and to, be, um, to suffer shame and to suffer mockery and to, and to ultimately be crucified and die on the cross. Like, Satan doesn't use pain. Satan goes after, after um, Jesus' relationship with his father. And the reason we know that is because of his response. He says, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God. You're not mindful of the things of God. He says, you're not mindful of the will of God. You're trying to, what, what was Satan trying to do? He was trying to get in between Jesus and the will of God. And here's the way he does it. He does it through Peter, obviously. But here's what Peter says. He says, far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. But the way Peter says it, I, I did a study on this, um, I think like a year ago, a couple of years back, but... Pretty much what Peter was saying when he says, far be it from you, um, what Peter was saying is that God the Father shouldn't do this to you. God the Father should not do this to you. Far be it from you to suffer this. Almost saying like, Jesus, like you shouldn't have to go through this. Or more specifically to Satan, your father shouldn't treat you like that. And so, and, and so when you look at it that way, when you see, because sometimes you read this and you're like, wow, like Jesus was really harsh with Peter, but no, Satan, it's almost like Satan was trying, Satan was trying to put a, put, put a wall of separation between Jesus and his father saying like, your father shouldn't treat you like this. Like, no, 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 hold on. You have it backwards. You have it backwards. We're, <laughs> yes, I'm going to suffer, but I'm going to be raised on, on the third day. I'm going back to heaven to reign and rule in the heavenlies. And I'm going to save the people that I love. Like that, that is the will of God. That is the will of God, and you're, and, 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 and um, Satan, Satan through Peter is trying to get Jesus hung up on the middle. No, don't get hung up on the middle. There's an end goal, amen? There's an end goal there, and so, um, so I don't, like I said, I don't know what you're going through, but don't get, don't get stuck in the middle, amen? Don't grow weary in doing good. There, 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 is, there is another side, and if you're struggling, don't give up. Do not give up. You know, and, and don't listen to the people that say like, oh, you shouldn't listen to your pastor like that, or you shouldn't read the Bible, and you know, you shouldn't believe everything that the Bible says, or, 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 or you shouldn't go off of what the truth of the Bible, you should go off of your emotion. No, 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 every single one of those people, you, like, they might be giving you good advice, but really they're being like Peter, where they're, they, they might have good intentions, and it might be good advice, but good advice is not always God advice, Right? Because God has a way of doing things that works every single time, amen? 
And the good advice probably might not work every single time in your favor. You know, the, the, the smart thing to do is not always the wise thing to do. The smart thing to do isn't always the right thing to do. Amen. So anyways, I, I, hope, you, I hope you're tracking with where I'm going. Don't, don't let outside people, outside influences, even those closest to you, never let them deter you from the will of God. And they might try to get you to look at the middle. Don't look at the middle. Look at the end goal, whether that's freedom, whether that's a revelation, whether that's faithfulness, whether that's whatever it may be. Amen. So hopefully that was encouraging to you guys today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for speaking to us today through your Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Please check out those links in our description box. There's one to give to Daily Hope. Thank you guys so much for your generosity. Also, there are reading plans there so you can follow along as we go through Matthew. Also, I want to know what was your takeaway? What did you get out of this chapter? I love reading those takeaways. Those are encouraging to me. And lastly, at Hope Community, people are our hearts. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorite. And Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow for Matthew chapter 17.